Welcome back, Grade A Gamers, for the first ever unscripted quick review for Deliver Us Mars. Deliver Us Mars is the second game from Kyokin Interactive, the studio behind 2018's surprise Kickstarter-funded hit, Deliver Us the Moon. Sit back and watch as we explore what makes this game better, and in some ways worse, than its predecessor. So if you could take a moment, watch my stupid logo intro, and hit the subscribe button before we get to it. First up we have graphics, which I've scored an 8 out of 10. If you played 2018's Deliver Us the Moon, you know that the number one graphic feature in that game was the environment. That feeling of isolation you got while on the lunar rovers going to set up the next MPT transmitter. It really felt like you were out there in that cold, dark, isolated, lonely space. While space and the machines that inhabit it look great in this game, unfortunately, the human beings leave a little bit to be desired and hopefully this will be addressed in a future patch. Also disappointing is the fact that for a game that deserves HDR support, Deliver Us Mars does not deliver a native HDR option. If you're looking for HDR, and for something to really make that beautiful OLED TV pop, you're gonna need to get this game on PlayStation 5. If Kyokin Interactive is able to iron out the frame rate in the outdoor areas on Mars and on Earth, can adjust some of the walking animations, and just polishes out some of the visual bugs, I truly feel that we have a $30 double-A game that is encroaching into the territory of big publisher triple-A graphic fidelity. When it comes to sound, I give Deliver Us Mars a 9 out of 10. What's really amazing is that when you have these ships flying away, The sound effects are amazing, the ships taking off are spectacular, the portals opening to allow you through, the decompression chamber of the airlocks. For a AA $30 game, it's really hard to compare Deliver Us Mars to any other game in its category. The music, the sound effects, they're all top notch. For the fun factor, Deliver Us Mars gets an 8 out of 10. A lot of the things done in this game aren't anything revolutionary, but what's there is fun. Most importantly, the storytelling is compelling, especially if you had experience playing Deliver Us the Moon. And the character development has really been taken to a whole new level. The fact that there are characters in this game other than hollow projected remnants of the past allows the characters to become more than just ideas or concepts that we get to make up in our own mind. When it comes to fun from a game like Deliver Us Mars, it's all about the experience rather than the individual elements. And Deliver Us Mars is an all around better package than Deliver Us the Moon was back in 2018. The gameplay is tighter, there's more to do. The story is told in a much more captivating way. Everything that Deliver Us the Moon did, Deliver Us Mars does better. If you liked the first one, you will absolutely love this game, bugs and all. Which brings us to our technical score, which is a six out of 10. This is a real big disappointment. Between the pop-in, the bad frame rates, the wonky walking animations, there are so many things in this game that, if done just slightly, slightly better, would be groundbreaking for a AA $30 purchase. As it stands, we'll just cross our fingers and hope that enough people spend $30 on a really unique experience so that Kyokin has the motivation and the money to put some patches out there and get this game where it needs to be. As an overall score, I give Deliver Us Mars a 7.75 out of 10. With a little bit of polish from a few post-launch patches, I think Deliver Us Mars will truly live up to the expectations that we had when we played Deliver Us the Moon. Here's hoping that Kyokin Interactive can push even farther with the third installment of this series, Deliver Us Earth? Thanks for stopping by and dealing with this terrible, terrible review. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm doing and how I'm going to do it, how I'm going to stand apart from all of the other video game YouTubers out there. So I appreciate any time that you spend with me. I'm getting real close to the 1000 subscriber landmark. I am forever grateful. And don't forget, right now we have a PlayStation 5 disc console that's going to be one March 1st. So if you haven't entered yet, the link is in the description. I'm going to give you a verbal goal line code as suggested by my loyal viewer Amanda. All combined, no spaces, no numbers, spell out the words, get ready for Mars. Until next time, this is Grade A saying, looks a little dark outside. Maybe you should stay in and just play a game.